Good morning. Shirley's in a hurry today, so she didn't play much on the piano for the introduction. So moving right along, good morning to you. Good morning to you who are worshiping with us online and will be doing so in the future. If you'll turn with me to the back of the bulletin real quick, typical announcements that uh, what's going on this week. Food pantry goes out next week, so let's be sure to get some stuff in there or some money it doesn't matter which, just as long as Shirley can get those at a good price. So if you can just make a contribution, that would be great. Great week we've had this week. The, the uh, trunk or treat, wouldn't you say, Molly, was a success? Yeah. I, I'm sorry I missed it. I'm sure there was plenty of candy and plenty of fellowship, plenty of good times. Nice way to reach out. That's a way to reach out to the community. I know that we talked about how we didn't know if we'd do it, how it would work out. I think it's going to be a keeper, isn't it? Yeah, very good. Okay, so that's what we've got going on this week. A lot coming up as we approach Thanksgiving, and then it's hard to believe that it's almost December and it's almost Advent. So we welcome all of you to our service of worship this morning. Those of you that are visiting, we welcome you, and we're glad to have you. Sally? If you please stand, we'll have our invocation. Dear loving God, we gather today to thank you for the many gifts and blessings you bestow upon us as we praise your name and word and song. Blessed be thy name. Give us the strength to always look and see the beauty of the earth. For you have created a wonderland of nature and glory of the skies. For this, we give you thanks with a grateful heart. You lift our spirits daily with your presence to cheer and to guide us along life's pathway. This presence may go unseen or unfelt, but it is there for the taking. All we need to do is ask. May this worship service today bring us closer to you and to reach out beyond the comfort of the walls, the comfort of our homes, and share the joy of knowing and loving you. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. List not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would remain standing, we'll have our hymn of praise, which is number 696, For Beauty of the Meadows. We will sing all verses of 696.
Would you please be seated? And Yaya has the children's message today. Jane Rose, come forward. wondering what's in here. I hid it from you, didn't I? I took it out of the closet and you didn't see it this morning. How are you doing this morning? It's good to see you. I know you like surprises. Tell me, what, what is your favorite surprise? This might be a surprise. We'll look in this in a minute because you know what? I like surprises too. And I brought a surprise for you today because this is what I like. I like to see different things in nature. I like to see different things down at the creek. I like to go to the ocean and see different things. And that's what is in here. And I'll let you pick some of these out here because I don't think you've seen them before. I hit them up on the shelf and you haven't seen them. You know what that one is? I know you know what that is. That's coral. That's coral. That grows in the ocean. It grows on the floor of the ocean and the fish they kind of gather around the coral. And there's lots of different things here too. There's seashells, and this is a big seashell. There's big, big seashells. You know why some of them are big and some of them are little? Because you know different things live in these. Big creatures live in these. Big snails live in these. Big clams, not snails, I'm sorry. Snails live in the, in the squiggly kind. These, are the, these clams live in these. And there's some little ones here. And there's some big ones too. But that's what I wanted to point out because we look outside, we look at nature, we go down to the creek, and we see different things every day. We see different birds, we see different, lots of different things. Just like there's lots of different people in this, on this earth. There's lots of different people that have lots of, there's men and there's women, there's different colors of people. But you know what? Inside us, everybody, What's inside of everybody? There's a little spark inside of everybody. And, it's the spark, and God puts that spark in us. And when you grow up and you get a little bit bigger, you can accept God into your heart. But right now, we look at the, beauty, the beautiful things of the earth and we look at all those neat things. And you can hold on to that and you can, you can look at that too. You want to bow your head for a word of prayer? Dear God, as we go through this day, and we do celebrate this day, let us remember that there's a lot of beautiful things out there to see each and every day. They're like gifts every day of the year. May we recognize those as gifts and accept you into our heart. And all these things we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. You can take that with you, okay? You can take it back with Tony. <laughs> Now, it's got something to play with, too. Okay, turning our attention to our prayer list, to back of the bulletin, I have circled in large letters birthdays because I tend to forget birthdays. I think Janie has a sign back there that she's got to hold up for me that says birthdays. I want to mention them first. Barbara Kenman, who's one of our members who's here now and then, has a birthday on the 7th. And Brother Joe Wright, the 12th of November, it says right here. Tony? No, sir. I'm asking that in April, but our mother and mother-in-law is the 11th, 12th, the 12th. Anniversary and then birthday. I've got all the moms' anniversary and birthday. And then I'm visiting Trent back here from the campground. Brian, his birthday was this past Thursday. Well, Brian. We're glad to celebrate with you, too. <laughs> Any others that we don't have? All right, Shirley, play us a short version. I then also forgot to mention, got so excited about all that, Bill McDonald, who is our one of our cult pastors who comes in and fills in now and then. His birthday is on the 13th, and so we want to remember Bill, too. I want to thank, none of you know this except for three of you, I had my COVID 
booster shot on Friday, and this was the first one that kind of affected me a little bit. About 3 or 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> tomorrow's Sunday, and I ain't feeling too hot. So I texted Shirley and Sally and Spike, who now has a sermon ready to go, correct? I said, boys, I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to make it in the morning, but as it is with these side effects, it doesn't last too long. So I got up today, and I was in good shape. But that's the way this church works. I mean, we're going we're gonna to rebound, and it's no rebound there. This is, this is the kind of leadership that I like to hope that I can be in some way to empower you because it's your church, God's church. It's not my church. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be, I hope, here. Also, Tuesday is Election Day. Brian, I see you're turning a little pale, but Tuesday is Election Day. And one way or another for all of us, then we need to get out and vote. I know there are probably pulpits and churches today where people are saying you need to vote for this person, that person. I still, I still think that we need to keep some separation between church and state and the, and the politics. Vote your conscience. Vote what's important to you. But the important thing is to vote this Tuesday. If you haven't already, we have all sorts of options. They're passed now, but but to vote early. Okay, that's it. Let's have a look at the those who are on the current prayer list. Penny Smith, Penny is home now. She texted me this morning. Penny, if you're watching, our prayers, of course, are with you. And uh, she wasn't feeling too good today, but good to keep, keep you posted or updated on how Penny's doing. Laura's undergoing some tests, and we want to continue to hold her in our prayers. Janet Magaha is also... Gay Hay, gay, gay Hay, I can't, I can't, I know people named McGaha and Gay Hay, and I have to think which way it is here, and it's Hay. So Gay Hay, we want to remember Janet, uh, who's got some news, some health news this week that she needs to deal with. Alan Jones and the family of Margaret Woodyard. Are there any others out here that we would add to the prayer list? Okay, let's pause then for a moment of quiet meditation. Father God, we are just delighted, excited, uplifted with the opportunity of gathering here in your house on this morning. This morning is really a special one because we get back the hour that we lost to sleep back in the spring with the change of time, daylight savings to the regular time. We know it's going to get dark a little earlier, but it gets light a little earlier now, too. As the seasons evolve one to another through the miracle of all that you do and all of your creation. We thank you for part of that miracle being your son, Jesus Christ, and the opportunity to gather here in your house. Together in this place dedicated so many, many, many decades ago to your glory. Dedicated when our whole denomination was in its infancy. Dedicated when our nation, our democracy, was just a mere 60 years old. Dedicated far back in the 19th century. But still dedicated as we hope to dedicate ourselves to your glory and to your work, to what you would have us to do. We come together today, O oh God, and we celebrate a vital part of that democracy which we have mentioned, the right to vote and to elect our leaders. We know that things have become a little bit messy in the last few years with regard to this. 
Help us, O oh God, to be judicious in defending democracy, in defending the right to choose, the right to pick our leaders. It's not for someone else to do for us, for someone to say this is wrong, this is right, so forth. We must do our due diligence and make decisions based on what we feel is best. We thank you for those men and women who are willing to step up and to present themselves for elected positions. If you ever want to find out, have your life examined, have your morals questioned, your intents, your focus, then all you need to do is put your name on a ballot. We're glad that there are enough people who are willing to do this and are willing to share their talents hopefully all for the right reasons, to the glory of the community, to the glory and the strength of this country. We ask your blessings upon them. As we gather here today, O oh God, we look as a church at ways that we can reach out into this community. We know that we are doing many things and trying to do more. Guide us, direct us, lead us. Just take us by the hand, open the doors, Tell us where you want us to go, what you want us to do. We're willing. We're able. We're willing to do what you want us to do to help make this world a better place. Bless those whose names we have mentioned here on the prayer list. Those who are here for health reasons. Those who are here for reasons of loss. Those who are here for whatever the reasons. And we pray to, O oh God, your blessings upon all who may face some sorts of struggles that they don't mention or they don't talk about, but you know what they are. Let them feel your strength and mainly let them feel your peace and your guidance, that they may indeed put their hand in yours and feel your leading. We know, oh God, that you gave so much for us and continue to give. We get ready now to once again enter the season of celebration of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. May Jesus be born again in our hearts in the days and months ahead as we celebrate this. These, this is the gift that was beyond all imagination and one that offers us change and hope in our lives. Bless us as we gather here. Bless us as we go our way. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Diana Bradley, step right up. Thank you. I just realized I wore my camouflage shirt today. I'm going to blend right in and you won't be able to see me. The message today is going to be on Genesis 1, 26 through 30. And that talks about the love that Jesus, God, has for us because of all he created for us. Uh, we hopefully are taught not to fear God, but to love God. The song I'm going to sing today is a song that my mother wrote. Some of you have heard it before. I haven't sung it for a while. But it talks about the way she feels, the way God loves her. So I hope you take this message from this song to your heart that he loves you also. It's called, I Know He's Watching Me. Let me tell you folks, there is one thing I know, and it makes me so happy, you see. I know my Jesus lives in the love that he gives, and this wonderful love is free. As I go every day on my own special way, his guiding light shines bright for me. When I follow the light, everything is all right, and I know he's watching me. Oh, I know, yes, I know, that my Jesus cares for me. As I go, I let it show, yes, I know he's watching me. When I come to the edge of that great abyss where so many have gone before, 
I have only to say, Lord, please show me the way to take control once more. Then he speaks to me in a gentle tone, and he calms the turbulent sea. And he guides me o'er to the peaceful shore, and I know he's watching me. Oh, I know, yes, I know, that my Jesus cares for me. As I go, I let it show, yes, I know he's watching me. As I travel on this great highway of life, when the roads are rough and steep, and I tremble with fear when danger is near, and I'm not too sure of myself, I say, Lord, take the wheel and guide me home. I can feel him close to me. Then I whisper a prayer and I thank him there, for I know he's watching me. Oh, I know, yes, I know that my Jesus cares for me. As I go, I let it show. Yes, I know he's watching me. Yes, I know he's watching me. Thank you. Your mother's a fine songwriter and you rendered it well. I want to read that scripture that Diana referred to. This is in the book of Genesis, the first chapter of the book, the 26th through the 30th verses. This is when God is wrapping up the creation story and is creating mankind. Please don't anyone be offended if I don't say men and women. He says both of them here. It's everyone. The creation is not just one sex or another. It's all of us. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that crawls upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. <coughs> Excuse me. Male and female, he created them. And he blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. I don't like subdue, but we'll just leave it there. Respect it, I think, is better. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath, I have given the green plant to you and all for food. And so it was. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I want to begin with a question. Who do you think loved you first? Who loved you first? Was it Mama? Was it Daddy? Was it your sibs? Was it your friends? Was it whoever? I posit to you the answer to that is God. God loved each of us first. God loved us first. 
in whatever manner you look at creation or evolution, whatever, we're here. And at the beginning of that process, at the beginning of the process, God in some manner created every one of us, everyone out there, everyone in here. We were created by God. And as the scripture points out, we were created in God's image. He says it's, there's a plural here. Let us create them in our image. Well, we could debate, was there somebody else there with him? Who was it? On and on. That's not the point. The point is the image in which we are created, the spiritual image, not necessarily the physical. How could God look like every one of us? How could God look like me and Tony too? It'd be a real challenge for him. Or how could God look like Shirley and Sally both? Or whoever it is. The idea is that we are in the, the image. We are created in the image of God. And it was God who loved us first. Why would God create someone, something, that he was going to love and not create them in his image? Or why would he create them in his image and not love them? It is just beyond my understanding. It's beyond my understanding how, how people can say, Oh, God's out there to get you. Or God's going to get you for that. Or God's writing in his big book all these bad things that you do. I just cannot get my, my mind around the fact, the notion, the idea that God created us, and then he sat there and he wrung his hands in a sort of a, a devilish sort of way. Can you imagine that? God in a devilish sort of way. And he said, Ah, oh, now I've got all these little humans running around. Now I'm going to get them. I'm going to chase them. I'm going to scare them. I'm going to make them feel uncomfortable. We do that to ourselves. God doesn't do that. Believe, as the title says, in the God who believes in you. Because God believes in each and every one of us. No matter who we are, no matter where we are. Through all of our lives, through everything that we do, this is something that needs to permeate us. But doggone it, religion has taken this. Here again, my opinion. You can show me the door, Mr. Chairman, after the church if you want to and say, pack your bag and go on. I, but religion has taken this and, and perverted it to the point where now so many churches, so many people use God as a hammer. God is going to get you. God is going to turn on you. God is going to find some way to make your life uncomfortable. Yesterday I was reading something in Christian Century magazine, which I've taken for years. I've let my subscription expire. I think I need to get it back again. But it was about an article that had been written about some other gentleman who had written a book of prayers. And the man that was writing, writing it, his name was Martin Copenhaven. And I don't know Martin, and you probably don't either. But in the essence of being able to report who said this, I want to share that moment. And he said that he had become, in the 1980s, during the 1980s as a student, he had become utterly alienated, utterly alienated by the soul-stifling, judgmental fundamentalism that he was raised with. The soul-stifling, just stopping it, fundamentalism that he was raised in, he said that he just had left the church. He'd left religion. He thought, how can this be? How can this be the way that God is? And then he read this book of this man's prayers, and I think I need to look them up. And he was uplifted by the love that is reflected in God. You see, we get started. Betty's, we were talking in Betty's class today about this. How, how, how does God, how does the love get shared? 
How does the law begin? How does it continue? The God that this man had been scared off by, by someone standing, I hate to say it of my brothers and sisters, standing in the pulpit, waving their arms, slamming their Bible on the, on the, on the podium here. That God has scared so many people that when they become adults, they can no longer identify with anything that is positive about God. And how do you react to that? You turn and run the other direction. I think one of the great callings that each of us has in our lives, if we feel the love of God, is to be able to share that. I think we share that in the life and work of this church, at least. I hope we do. I'm sure we do. <clears throat> We share it with people who are in need. We share it with, with this excellent event this week for the community. Kids, you all, dressing up. Saw some great pictures that, that Sarah posted that, of, of all the people that participated in this. To open our doors, open our hearts, and not to have to go through and say, Oh, gee, we can't do Halloween. Halloween's a satanic holiday. We can't do that. We've got to do something else. God, the God that created you, believes in you. That God loves you. The God that I know, it's the God that I believe in, the God that I feel about, the same God that made each and every one of us. Now I have another question for you. This is a question that I was asked just one day this week in a discussion with one of our, our members who I won't identify, but he, she will know who it is when I say it. What about bad people? What do we do about bad people? My opinion on this is God did not create, God did not, God, ready, let's back that up. God did not create bad people. God loved and created in his image. It says so here. It says here, in his image. He created. He created everyone. The world took this person. They, or they lived. Perhaps their parents. Perhaps circumstances. The world took them and made them into a person who we might determine or call a bad person. The world made them into that. You know, in psychology, it's always asked about adoption and, and debated. What, what, is, what is more powerful when it comes to adoption? Is it environment or is it heredity? What is it that, that, in, that can influence a person more? I think when we come, I'm not talking about adoption, but I think when we come to this, the circumstances in which a person finds himself or herself can very much impact the way they feel about the world. How do you react to people who smile all the time? You smile. How do you react to people who frown all the time? You tend to frown. I've used this example before. Years ago, when we got the very primitive thing that is now almost outdated, the One Call Now program that, that we thought was, the, it's the extension of the old calling chain, you remember, that had in churches one person call five and five and five, and everybody, Mary Evelyn Beverly took care of it here in this church, the late Mary Evelyn Beverly, may she rest in peace. She'd call everybody three times because she'd forget who she called. And so the, the calling chain <laughs> became, you know, they said, oh, there's Mary Evelyn calling me again to tell me we're not going to have church tomorrow, whatever it is. <clears throat> we got one call now. We got everybody's telephone number. You all are on that, I hope. If you aren't, you ought to be. Sally took it over. Well, Sally usually smiles all the time, but on the first one call now, you weren't smiling, were you? No. And I told her that I'd read somewhere, it isn't original with old Phil, I read that if you, t if you answer the telephone and you say, good morning, how are you today? People can feel that, can't they? They feel that smile. This call is from the Warsaw Christian Church. You just think, oh, good. If you hear this, this call from the Warsaw Christian Church. You don't, it, makes you, it almost makes you say, I don't, I don't want, you don't really want to know what I've got to say. 
but I've got to do this because Phil called me and said, would I do a one call now on this? So we, we, we reflect what's going on in us. And if we can reflect the good and the blessing that God did for us in our creation and on our sustaining, then I believe we can make a real impact on the world by smiling when you talk to someone, by helping. The concept of the bad people. Yes, there are bad people. I don't know that they're bad people. There are people who do bad things. How do we deal with that? Sometimes I've had folks say, oh, that's just a feel-good church. Well, you know what? I, don't, I, I would rather go to a feel-good church than a feel-bad church. I don't, <laughs> I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't want you to feel any worse when you leave here, even if you don't feel any better. I realize these pews aren't comfortable. They sit almost straight up. We don't sit like this anymore, but, but as I say that, Linda starts to squirming around on the front row. You think, they're not the most comfortable things in the world, but you don't have to feel, you don't want to feel uncomfortable, at least I don't think you do. Feel worse than when you left. And one woman in church years ago came out of the church and she said, you know, cracking that pew, I got to run in my hose. I, I don't remember what I said. But <laughs> probably wasn't the nicest thing in the world, but I mean, I, what, how, what's the preacher going to do about a crack in a pew, you know? Sit there and putty all the pews or something. Think about the good things. Think about the things that help you smile, that make you feel better. Because I feel... I feel that the God who believes in you, we believe in that God. And that God smiles at us. Shirley's going to wring my neck about this one, but, well, since she's in a hurry, we won't take anything about it. <laughs> she always tells me, if you just give me a little heads up on these songs that you're going to use, I could really do something with them. But there is an old song. This is a very simple one that we've campground type song. Go something like this. What the world needs now is love. What the world needs now is love. Love, sweet love. Now, this song kind of grew out of the hippie era, too, and I don't know if all the love they were talking about was the love of God, but that's, a, <laughs> that, that's one of the challenges with the English language. You know, we only have one word for love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing, the only thing that there's just too little of. It's like the country music song. Can you have too good a time? Can you have too much love? Can you have too much enjoyment? Can you feel too good? I love it when I'm feeling good. Yesterday afternoon, as I started to sink, and I knew that might happen because folks have had reactions to that, to that second or third booster, whichever one it is. And I got to thinking, you know, I just don't like feeling bad. I don't like feeling bad, and I thought, the people that think that, that somehow the ones we know that say they enjoy bad health, why would you want to enjoy bad health? There's so much in this beautiful world. The God that created and loved you, the God that we loved, we love because he first loved us. We don't have to have or uh, stop the image that someone thinks that, well, we're just pushovers because, oh, they're just a feel-good, lovey church. No, we can stand up. We can stand up to bad. We can stand up to wrong. We can speak our minds. But we do it out of the love that God gave us. Saying, how do we share that? How do we give that, put that forth to someone else? Just leave you where we began. Believe in the God who believes in you. May we pray. Our Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. We can't even start to make a list because we leave too many things out. Help us to just shift the gears and look to the positive. People we don't agree with, we may not agree with what they say or what they do, but we don't have to hate them. We don't have to call them names. We don't have to say bad things about them. If we can work to demonstrate the love that you have for us in our world, Maybe, maybe we can turn things around.
to where we are looking on the positive rather than the negative. We believe in you, O oh God, because you first believed in us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is hymn number 62, Creator God, Creating Still. Is that a song that I know? It is. It's a song that I know. That's good. Let's stand and sing all the verses. Is that what we're doing? All the verses, number 62, Creator God, Creating Still. I know the tune, didn't know the words, but it's a great message, great message in that song. Sally? We come now to the table of the Lord. Everyone is invited to participate in the table of the Lord, for God is love. This is the table, table of joy. We want to spread that joy with everyone. We do not want to hide our souls. Let this table, these emblems, be food for our souls. So we can go out into the world and spread the love of God. For what the world needs now is love, sweet love. As we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer or communion, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather at this table of remembrance. Please let these elements deepen our understanding of the power of your love and come closer to feeling your will. Help us to strengthen our faith faith that we might be spreaders of hope and agents of peace in jesus name we pray amen now on the night jesus was to be betrayed he gathered his disciples in the upper room and he took a loaf of bread and he broke it and he said this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me let us share the bread of life And in like manner, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he passed it among his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And remember, as long as you eat the bread and you do drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us take the fruit of the vine together and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Dear loving God, as we go forth from this wonderful place, this wonderful sanctuary, these pews that we are sitting on, and the comfort of our homes, let us go out into the world and spread your love amongst the community. We can spread your love through the smiles that we give people, through the hugs that we give our friends. Be with us each and every day as we spread that joy and live that joy. In all our prayers, may thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Benediction. Now, in the name of the God, you, O oh God, who first loved us, 
we love you. We believe in you as you believe in us. Lead us, guide us, and direct us to be the people that you would have us to be. To go with love in our hearts and a smile on our faces. To share your word where we can. To show caring and compassion in challenging times. For it is in the name of the one who came, who lived among us, who taught us, who died and was resurrected, who showed us the ultimate love, that we ask it all. Amen.